We started no-tilling uh, our beans into the corn stalks probably around 05. And, you know, we do a few fields here and then I started seeing some benefits uh, of it. it. It also, I mean, it can be a challenge in a really wet spring, but uh, we've managed to get it done. And, you know, and doing that too, we're also noticing when it does get dry, our beans are staying a little more healthy looking when it, they're not getting the heat stress or the moisture stress. We're holding a little extra moisture. As far as the, the corn, we're doing a minimum, minimum till. We're spreading our fertilizer. We're using a sulfur to work it in and then planting it to try to keep uh, as much soybean residue for you know erosion facts, wind erosion in the spring and until the corn gets rolling and stuff. So that's the benefits I guess I see of the no-till and, and uh, strip or minimum till. I would say that our yields are, have been going up the last few years. Uh, I think part of it, you know, it could be we're, we're maintaining more moisture in the soil, but it, you know, the genetics every year get a little better uh, and stuff too, so it's, it's kind of a hard one to pinpoint down, but I, but I do notice that when it does get hot in July and August, and if we are a little lacking in moisture, our, our crops seem to hang in a little better at that time. As far as when we transitioned into the minimum till, no till, uh, we, we already had a Selford. Basically what it is, it's a wavy coulter that just runs through the ground and flips the soil around. We're not, it's not like a shanked machine at all. It, it's just, uh, it's a wavy coulter that's working the top few inches of the ground. We upgraded to a bigger one. We went from a, a 34 foot or 36 foot to a 50 foot to get across all our acres faster. As far as the, the drill, we, I guess uh, I work with a neighbor and he's had a no-till drill and he started, that's kind of what got me going on the no-tilling into the soybeans so so that he already had that tool uh, we bought this Alford and stuff so that's about the only piece of equipment uh, that we had to buy out of you know different and I got a bunch of pieces of tillage equipment that now just sit in a lot and never get used <laughs> with the no-till there you know there can be some weed challenges a little bit but with the uh, new uh, trees that are coming out which come into where the roundups of the world aren't working anymore so we got to all got to study up and make sure we get the right chemicals on and, and stuff with the no-till and and you know with not working the field you you know you you're battling more weeds than the average guy so that's something yeah you gotta constantly go get updated on all your new chemicals coming out and and stuff but but then you with the cover crops i mean you you use rye for a cover crop and say you plant green which we have tried slowly working into planting some green, which is like rye, you plant it into a spring, get something growing right away in the spring, let it use moisture. And the rye roots secrete some type of toxin in the soil and where that rye is, it's as clean as a whistle in there. So there's lots of things we're learning. And then, you know, you do that, you plant your beans into it, spray it off. It's called, you know, we call it planting green. And then it seems like it just stays clean so much longer and stuff in your next pass with the sprayer, you know, it can be held back a little bit. Uh, the no-till, I guess, really shines when it's drier out. Uh, that's when it works the best. Um, you keep all that residue on top of the ground, so when it does rain, the sun ain't beating on it right away, and it ain't drying it out. Uh, we aren't losing the moisture from the fall's tillage and the spring's tillage if it's a drier year. Uh, as far as no-till, a minimum till in a wetter year, I guess soybean stubble we never really have too much of an issue with, but the, the corn stubble can get wetter in a wetter spring, uh, so that's something you got to deal with. But we, we went from a full chopping corn head to a corn head that we can shut our choppers off so we can leave our corn stalk standing now if we want, so we got that option. So I think some years uh, we build too much of a mat there. Uh, so with a non-chopping corn head or a corn head we can switch back and forth on, we have that option of leaving our stalks a little taller, uh, not chopping them up so fine that they're leaving such a mat on the ground either. We haven't had a, a lot of challenges, I guess. Uh, you know, the wetter springs, you might have to wait a little longer to get them in. Or if we're having trouble when it's wet and no-till, everybody else is too, because it, it's just too wet, too hard to get in the fields to plant. Well, no-till, I mean, thing, things are kind of slower to jump out of the ground per se. The ground's a little cooler. Uh, 
something I guess I'm thinking about trying maybe in the future is strip till. Get that, that strip in there with the, you know, the black strip to get the crop up and out. Uh, I know there's some guys working with bio till or, you know, they get a crop growing like a radish and then when that and the rots over way in the winter and spring, then they come plant into that row. You know, so there's there's different things you can do. But I mean no till is it it's oil is a little slower. Like the soybeans are a little slower to get out of the ground than uh, regular full tillage. But the the I see the benefits later, I guess. They always catch up and they look right now they look identical. Uh, I just I like the benefit of having some cover on my ground to keep some extra needed much needed moisture at the time in the soil when the things get a little hot and dry. It's uh, kind of one of them things where y you got to stay in it to make the whole system work. You can't just after a year or two kind of give up on it because then you're kind of wrecking the cycle of the no-till. and. Mm -hmm.